morning, everyone. It's Friday, May 15th. We're halfway through the month. Time is flying. Remember when you were a little kid sitting in school and man, about 15 minutes before three o'clock, that's when we would be let out. You'd be sitting there watching the clock and it would uh, that 15 minutes would be equal to a 24 hour stretch in a little kid's mind. And it's the opposite going on here. All of a sudden it'll be four o'clock or whatever. And John and I are like, where did this day go? We have never been busier, which is great. I mean, it's a good problem to have trying to deliver you new content and, and all that good stuff. So before I get into content and the block we're going to be piecing today, please do get a pencil or pen and get your pattern book and or your pattern okay because I'm gonna want you to make some um, I'm gonna want you to make some notes on it the block we're doing today is fairly straightforward but then I'm gonna give you more homework besides the point all right so I don't know if any of you are experiencing what I call COVID brain I, and I am serious so here's the deal you know I've been getting organized. I finally got to my underwear drawer and I've done so many cleanies and tidies and all that and I can't find anything. And I can't find anything because I think I mentioned the other day before I just kind of knew what pile it was thrown in or what door it was shoved behind or whatever. But yesterday was a classic, okay? So I went to Trader Joe's. I go every Thursday and one of the things I buy is iced tea and maybe milk for John. And what happened was I got home and I'm like going, ah, they put the iced tea on the, on the bottom of the grocery, uh, the grocery cart. And I'm sitting there thinking, do I go back or just, you know, forget it or what, you know? And John said, no, go back. Cause it could still be there. And I called Trader Joe's before I went over there, even this just a mile from my house. And I said, I, I, lo I lost, I didn't get my tea and they said well come back you can just get some tea and I oh you know so I drive back and of course the grocery carts there were there wasn't any iced tea under it so I mean this is like so uncomfortable for me and and my girlfriend who works there goes oh you're the tea lady and she asked me so I got some avocados because I forgot to get those and then I went and got tea and as I'm wa and they gave it to me, as I'm walking out to the car with my tea and my avocados, the phone's ringing and I'm like going, I, I didn't have a cart. My hands were full. Okay, whatever. So John said, it was John. And I, when I went back to go to Trader Joe's, I asked him to put away the groceries. And he said, did you buy one tea or two teas? And I said, just one tea. And he said, I think I have it. This is what I couldn't find people. It was behind the grocery bags. So if you have COVID brain, you're in with good company. And if none of you have COVID brain, I don't want to hear about it. All right. Because then we got bigger things to worry about. So I mentioned on Wednesday that this Sunday, the show that's going to drop is our master class. It is just like a, one of the regular shows that, that drops every other uh, Saturday night and I'm super excited about it because there's so much information in it piecing will be the piecing will be in two installments as well applique and we just hardly even scratch the surface so watch for that so let me see um, I want to talk about what we're gonna do today and what we're going to do I gotta put down this slide it's shining me in my face and I can't see we're going to do the churn dash block, all right? It's a very, very simple block. It has uh, strip piecing in it and it has half square triangles. You guys, there's a million ways to do half square triangles besides the traditional way of just cutting your square, cutting corner to corner, and then sewing it together. What I'm gonna share with you are my is, is my favorite way to do it. It's what it's my go-to all the time. I used to do it the old-fashioned way where you would just, you know, cut your squares, cut them corner to corner, and then stitch each one. But I like the one where you cut the square and then you draw a line down the well, I'll show you when we get there, okay? So let's first talk about strip piecing. Strip piecing, I love it. When we had a new our new webmaster, he goes, Did you know that 
you've been hacked on your site because there's something about strip piecing or stripping on it. I'm just, no, that's Eleanor Burns, people. So if you're new to sewing or to quilting, strip piecing is where you sew two strips of fabric together, you press it, and then you cut it into the sex sections you want. And in this case, it would be the little, the, well, the, the little wingettes on it. We go back to this again. It would be the 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock pieces, all right? So what I do, and oftentimes when you strip piece, your piece starts to bow. You guys, you know how that happens. So this is what I do when I'm doing strip piecing. First of all, I do set the seams, meaning I take my iron, and I not on my hand, obviously, on <laughs> my ironing board. I iron it before I turn it over and then press from the top side and you press to, in this case, I chose to press to the dark, all right? But when it starts to bow, this is what I do. I go to, let me see, I go to my ironing board and with a friction pin, or friction, I really don't know what it's the real way to say it is, but anyways, I draw a line on my ironing surface and then I can straighten out this strip by just butting up to that line, all right? So that's how I keep my strips from bowing. And then the great thing is, is because it is, it is a friction pin, when you hit it with the iron, the ironing board, it will go away. So it's not like you're permanently marking up your ironing board. In the olden days, I actually had a black felt tip pin that I went right down the line, but you don't need to when you've got this thing in your life. So what you're going to do is, let's build this block, all right, and let me sew it for you. So let's turn to page, got my little posty notes here. Let's turn to page 16, all right? For A, I have already sewn the strips together and what I'm going to do, let me go up here. See, these are ready to go in a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut at two and a half inches once this strip is done. So basically, you're gonna have it two and a half, or two and a half, this is two and a half, two, no, that's not right. Yes, it is. And then you're gonna cut this thing two and a half this way. So I kind of am in a precarious cutting situation. I prefer to be standing up at my board, but desperate times call for desperate measures, right? One, so I'm gonna go two and a half, two and a half, two and a half. And then again, what did I, was that two and a half? Oh yeah, good. And it has you cut a whole strip that is one and a half by 13. And then that's how you're gonna get these things out of here. Like that. Remember to hold your knobs this way, not the way I was just doing it. And the reason is, is when you get into larger rulers, if you're holding it like this, it's gonna wiggle wobble around. Okay, so get that out of here. Now I'm going to put this like this, like this. I just had a moment of panic here. Like this, is that right? Boy, that looks really odd to me. Wouldn't this just be the best? Okay, now I'm gonna talk about these guys. These were cut at two and seven, two and seven eighths, these squares. I have the light side, I have the dark side. Again, I drew a line down the middle you could cut it and just sew your quarter inch, but I like this technique the best. If you don't have a good quarter inch foot, and I think I said this the other day, you might want to mark it on both sides yet another right there that you're going to sew on. But I have a really good quarter inch. Uh, I use a number, a number 37 on my Bernina. I did buy my 97 D that I thought I'd lost the other day, and and it was because I'd organized everything. I think I need to get back on the road again and go back to my unorganized, but it looks shiny on the outside self. So here we go, I'll do one more. I'm not, sh I'm not showing this because, as I mentioned on Wednesday, the three camera situation was a little bit of a fiasco. However, 
I will do it when I'm showing how to do the spool block and how to do the basket block. And I actually got an email from somebody saying, could you please do the basket block next? So that's what I'll do on Monday. All right, so here we go. I'm back. Here's my little, oh, I hope I turned that on. Yeah, I did. Here's my little triangle blocks right here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my rotary cutter. You know when you lose stuff, you guys, chances are it's under something else, like my ruler right here, all right? And I'm going to cut it. When you are cutting in a perfect world, you don't want your ruler off like this because it will not, it just doesn't give you the accuracy. But again, desperate times, desperate measures. Here's the other one. And now the great thing is that my biases are all sewn up. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this right over here. Is there a problem, John? Popping sound. Oh, my popping sound. Oh man, how do I get that down? There we go. That should make it better, sorry. He's actually the director in the other room. There we go, right there. Make you a little seasick while I'm doing that. Because my biases are all sewn up now, I can be confident that if I set this seam, it's not going to screw things up. All right? So I set it, then I turn it over, right side up, I press it. I would not have a problem using steam at this point because there are no exposed biases. If there were exposed biases, no way, no way, no way will I use my steam. There we go, and there we go. All right, now I gotta put the camera back, close your eyes. Maybe I'll do this and it won't make it so seasicky. Okay, now let's try laying out the block and see what it looks like. Okay, so then this, this is, what is wrong here? Oh, okay, that goes there. What is wrong here? Did I do something? I did something really wrong, I think. Well, let me keep going. There we go. And then I got the center, which is right here. Why isn't this working? I've done something really wrong. Oh, poop. Now I cut those two and a half. Hey, if somebody can help me here, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> Something's wrong. Like really wrong. This goes here, this goes here. Well, this is a disaster in motion right here. You've just seen it. Huh. That's not right, you guys. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh, my God. What am I doing wrong? Turn them 90 degrees? That's not right. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Huh. See, this should go. This is... John, is anybody helping me? What am I doing wrong? Get the finished block. I don't have the finished block is right over in here. I really cut something wrong. Huh. Well, let's see. This happens. It happens. Okay. So what am I going to do? There is a way. Oh, my God. Read the instructions. <laughs> Read the instructions. This needs to be like this, right? So I need to center this right here and make it so that it's a two and a half. So that's what I'm going to do. I still don't know what I did wrong. This is rather embarrassing. Okay, so if I want this to be two and a half raw, I want this line at one and a quarter. God, I hope the instructions aren't wrong. Okay, no, because I did it before. And then this is two and a half. You see what I'm doing here? You know, every single other freaking time. They're saying this should be one and a half inch strips. One and a half, oh. <laughs> John said they're saying they should have been one and a half inch strips. What does it say in the thing? Oh, it says one and a half. Okay. There, there you go. Oh, God. Hey, 
do you guys want to come and pay it <laughs> pay and take a class with, <laughs> with me covid brain covid brain you know it's so funny because i do not read instructions i'm also a nice cold brain do you want me to pour you some tea yeah <laughs> pour me some tea with something in it man <laughs> Um, I'm dyslexic too. Oh, good grief. Oh, isn't that just hilarious? Not really. But you know, you know what I'm doing now? I made them bigger so I could square them up. So I make sure it was right on the freaking money. Oh, God. Oh. This is why I like having Ricky Timms as my co-host, <laughs> because he helps me through this. Yeah, it's, it, the instructions are right. I'm wrong. Okay. I love you guys so much. Here we go. So then what you do is you sew these in rows, sew these in rows, and sew these in rows. Should we see if I have the ability to do that? You know, I remember one time teaching at a Silomar, and I had cut something wrong. In fact, I think it was star. It was the stars class, and it, it, I, it was just like it was totally screwed up like this. And at the end, someone said, "Well, why didn't you? Why didn't you? I mean, you didn't cut blah blah blah." And I'm like, "Well, why didn't you tell me?" She says, "I don't know." I, <laughs> It's like telling a man his flies down. Does anyone want to pull a short straw for that one? Oh, good grief. Okay. I can see if, if this quarantine goes on much longer where this whole thing is headed. <laughs> so here we go. I'll just, you can, I'll tell you this, this is what my friend Laura Nouns does. You can just keep them in rows like this and then add on this other side. I, for me, I, I don't care for that so much. I like to keep them separate, but I always do go and lay them out just again. <laughs> oh, good grief. There you go. Your fearless leader. You know, I feel I feel really sorry for these kids that are homeschooling <laughs> because of my dyslexia. I mean, I know that, like my second grader is just getting mountains of work and um, there's a lot of reading and this and that. Now she is an avid reader, so that's not the issue. But I know had I been a school person, a kid in school during this virus, I would have been in really bad shape because I don't read well. Uh, John said, oh, you need to read this, and it was all this Medicare stuff and this and that, and I'm like, no, I don't read, especially stuff like that. When, it, when I get a really long, drawn-out email, I just want to cry. So I learn by doing. <laughs> so how I'm going to iron here is I iron the way, yeah, why don't I just sew it on like that and just complete this whole project perfectly. I am going to iron these wings out oh wait on the instructions we're having you do in okay these ones in the arrows on your instructions are which way you iron again i don't read you know my first book they wanted to know how i worked and because i'm not a great reader i'm not a great pattern writer i just had basically buy fabric and sew it <laughs> just buy more go get more fabric that book is long out of print i wonder why Okay, and then this one goes this way. And I know why uh, Kristen wrote the pattern for this, either Kristen or Suzanne did. The reason they're having, the reason they're having you press this way is because then you can see the little tips right there when you go to sew it to something else. So now I'll go back to my infamous pinning technique with my pins that are under something and Actually, I did that screw up on purpose so I could use more time of your of your valuable stinking time, right? Oh. Warts and all. Here I am. Oh, we got another mouse. 
And you know, my cat used to be a hunter gatherer, but she's too old. And I saw her little behind coming out from underneath my fabric bins. And lo and behold, so see now I can see the lines go straight across. I'm gonna sew it. As soon as John walks in, I'm like, going, uh oh, what's going on? Thank you for saving me on this, you guys. I appreciate. So one more. There we go. I'm gonna put the thread snipper in it. A new quilter contacted me and said, okay, the bobbin's gone. The bobbin's out. Well, that's the end of this demo right now. <laughs> But that's okay. I will finish this later. Oh gosh, here we go. <laughs> so here, oh, here's one side here. And then I just am gonna do this one right here. And there you go, all right? There, so this is a really, really simple block. In a sense, we should have started with it, but I wanted to, do this block because this weekend you're going to have more homework. All right, so let's talk about our homework Let me come over here and make sure the cameras There we go. Okay so What we have going on here is we've pieced this piece. We don't have the applique yet for it, right? I think I can I think I can scoot in this camera a little bit more for more of a close-up That's good. Okay, and I gotta talk loud, John just said. So here's your little churn dash here, done properly. Here it is here, done properly. You've pieced your background, but we need to cut <coughs> these two strips out here. We gotta get those cut out too. And that's on page, I did mark my book. Um, that is, if you go to page four on your book, all right, page four. Well, let me show you. Let me get the camera down, and then we'll show you. We're going to need to cut. I think any reputation as a teacher I have ever had just got shot out the window. Okay, so we've got the centerpiece here, right, everyone? Right in here. And then this little wing here, finished, measures three and a half by 12 three and a half by 12, I mean, it measures three by 12, so you cut it three and a half by 12, three and a half by 12, all right? And get, get those cut out. Then as you start making your blocks, which, you know, we have, put them up, we have to, at some point, deal with two different things. We have to deal with the outside triangles, and we have to deal with these little squares right here. So this weekend, I might just do a bunch of more half square triangles. Now remember, they're cut differently than what we just did now. So on page, what page is this? On page nine, it shows you how big to cut those half square triangles. You don't really have to arrange them on your board at this point, but I would just get a bunch of them done and make sure you have light and dark, light and dark, light and dark. Then, upside down. <coughs> the book's upside down oh sorry <coughs> okay sorry guys can I just go have a Long Island after this <laughs> so make a bunch of these it says here you're gonna need 44 if you want to get going on your four patches which are over here let's go take a look at this quilt again the four patches here are in here and down here, okay? What happens is when I am doing these four patches or the flying geese, uh, or not flying geese, the half square triangles, <clears throat> well, more, the, more the, the four patches, you want to pick up colors that are in other places in the quilt. So let's take a look at the one we're actually really making and assess what's going on. <coughs> I'm gonna have to scoot out a little bit on this one. There we go. So one of the colors that predominantly jumps out at me is green. 
And I'm sorry if you're not working with this collection, but for those of you who are, I wish there were more greens in it. But I wanna make sure, and I talked about this earlier at some point, that my eye jumps around with the green and I wanna make darn sure the green is in some of those little four patches too. And you might even wanna just do a four patch, a four patch, a four patch. Don't sew them together, but just put them up there and let them reside. And then as the quilt takes form, then you can you know, arrange where you want them. Because what we're gonna do next is we're gonna do the basket because somebody asked, and then we're gonna do spools. And those are a little more complicated. And you can bet your last dollar, I'm gonna pray so one before I have you suffer through this mess. So the, oh, I wanna talk a little bit more about half square triangles as I mentioned in the beginning there's a zillion ways you can do half square triangles all right so Marcia McClowski who has Klosky, who has been on the show her show is one two oh three does half square triangles by sewing bias strips together and Marcia does just these incredible uh, feathered stars let's see I think this is the one I want feathered star blocks and I mean she nails it with them and she has and she does it using bias strips okay so this is kind of it quickly how it works and again I'm not going to explain this but if you want to see that show again it's 1203 then we also another craze that's out there is a uh, block lock a lot of people love their block lock and we did a show with uh, Jenna Thomas and that's 1803 so you might want to check that out and people there's even there's even more than that there's more than that so there's just a million ways to do half square triangles and what you're going to end up doing is finding the one that sit that sits that sits in your belly oh that's what I'm going to get rid of that are you are more com most comfortable with. I've shared with you the way I am most comfortable. Although I'm going to tell you the Marsha the Marsha one's pretty pretty slick. Some of you have asked about this quilt behind me. Not right now behind you when I'm standing in the other direction. That is actually a uh, circle quilt that is not appliqued. It's pieced, you guys. It's pieced. And I think it's called the seven minute circle. And it was, this technique was invented by my friend Dale Fleming, who's in my mini group. And so I'm circling back to the master classes. Um, when we do master class piecing one, this technique will not be in it, but piecing two, it will be in it. So you really want to make sure you guys take advantage of that, this this um, this next one. And it's not a class that's on Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning. It is in lieu of an episode. So anyways, um, you can join for $19.95 for six months. You are not gonna, I'm telling you right now, you gotta check out uh, Marsha's and Janet Thomas's way. And we will see you on Monday and I'm thinking a lot of you will have a lot done because the weekend gives you two days. And, you know, I'm going to fill my bobbin. That's the first thing I'm going to do. And then read the instructions. So, you know, and the truth of it is, you guys, when I see, John, are there questions coming in? When, a couple of specific when I see a block, I don't read it. Like, I don't want to go over here and read what to cut. I like to write the numbers right on the block so I'm not having to deal with all of these words. So that's how I do it. Okay, John, you got some questions? Um, you can say asked what? about the strips. That you said 3 by 12 and you said 3 and a half by 12. 3 and a half by 12 and a half is what I want you to cut those side strips in That for this one over here. Three and a half. They finish 3 by 12, cut at 3 and a half by 12 and a half, okay? Don't trust a thing that's coming out of my mouth today. And then what size are the four patches? The four patches are three inches, what they are. So you're cutting those squares at, or those squares at two inches. Then you, then when you sew them, it all be, it goes one and a half, one and a half equals three. So that is what those ones finish at. 
I know it's confusing, especially if you're new, but you know, the funny thing is, well, it's not funny. I mean, it, it is. I flunked geometry and this is what I'm doing for a living. And if you're just completely overwhelmed by the whole thing, it will start to become second nature to you. I absolutely promise you. The fact I could just pull out the math on those four patches was un incredible. So uh, to hang with us if you're new. I love it. I love it. What time is the masterclass? The masterclass will be included in your subscription to the quilt show. The first one comes out Sunday night. No, Monday, Saturday night. Saturday night, at midnight. Saturday night at midnight. So it's going to just reside in your library of shows. You don't have to get up and watch it at this time. Again, it's just in lieu of a series. And it all came about because we couldn't go to taping. And then somebody came up with the idea. And when we started digging at it, we're like going, holy smokes. I mean, there's we're just scratching the surface with the master classes and I could see us doing it with some other subject matters too but for now it is going to be piecing part one part two and then applique part one part two I can't wait to see I cannot wait to see it our editors pretty thrilled and the same with our producers so okay you guys have a good one have a good 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 one stay safe and remember your iced tea at the bottom of your shopping cart that's my tip for today